thank you everyone for joining. Um, we're super excited to be here. So Bree and I, um, actually, uh, we have some bios out here, um, but we won't necessarily belabor those. You guys will have access to this board um, after we um, finish today. So they'll be sending this out. So you guys can easily return to it. But um, within those bios, you can kind of see a little bit more of our background and then also connect with us on LinkedIn. Um, we love to connect with like-minded folks. So um, definitely, that's awesome. So. Um, Lindsay, if you want to follow me, we'll go that direction. So welcome to the workshop. So we're going to take just a few minutes to kind of introduce you not only to us, but also what we're going to be working through with you guys today. Um, we know that we have some uh, fellow mural lovers here. So we'll be diving into not just some uh, workshopping techniques that we've learned, but also some tips. Um, and then also giving you guys some time to break out and talk about what you're learning. So uh, when we're talking about just myself, so I've been at h and Block almost two years now. Um, a number of folks may not know uh, what h and Block is. So we provide products and services to aid our customers with not only tax prep, but also small business consulting, payroll, bookkeeping, et cetera. Um, since being founded by two brothers back in 1955, Henry and Richard Block, um, we've grown to over 2,000, I'm sorry, over 10,000 employees, and we have roughly 12,000-ish uh, tax offices across the, the U.S. and the world. Um, we're headquartered in Kansas City, and that is where Bree and I are right now. So um, I'm just 30 minutes south of the city. I, I grew up 30 minutes from here. Um, it's just my husband and I and our two fur babies. So a pug and Missy, um, pug named Lily and Missy, it's a Dotson. We're gonna try to keep them quiet. Um, the whole working from home dynamic has been very interesting this year. Um, kind of a hobby of mine is PC gaming. I don't know if there's any shout outs out there in chat of anyone who's playing Valheim or enjoying um, any PC gaming. Um, when it comes to what I do at Block specifically, we're talking about product development cycle today and how to facilitate and collaborate better across it. I'm kind of further up the funnel, if you will. I'm kind of at the beginning where ideas are still kind of being formed. Um, I really help to um, empower teams. Part of my job is to bolster and strengthen collaboration. Miro has been a huge part of that. Um, cultivating empathy amongst teams, cross-functional, so from IT to product to QA. Um, also helping to build consistent uh, consensus, helping those teams align. Um, using Miro has been great at helping us foster innovation. Um, we've been doing a lot of design sprints lately and different types of workshops to help really activate our teams. And then also um, it's been a really culture lift too. So Miro has really enabled me to help. So if you wanna connect with me on LinkedIn, again, um, wide open to connect, love connecting with like-minded folks. And on to Bree. Perfect. Thanks, Kimbra. Yeah. So um, Kimbra works on the strategy side, and I kind of work on her partner team in the design space. Um, I'm a user experience designer, and specifically, I work for the products that our tax pros or our tax professionals use in our retail offices. Um, I've been with Block about three years, and before that, I worked in the healthcare IT space, and I also do some freelance and volunteer work within um, like journalism, legal, social, social justice, and climate spaces. Um, so I basically have a hankering for complex problems. Um, and in terms of kind of more about my locale, um, I live in the heart of KC. Um, it's just me and my Australian shepherd puppy who's currently napping right now. So similar to Kimbra, I'm crossing the fingers that he'll stay, he'll stay quiet. <laughs> um, but then I also like to include that my Jeep Wrangler Xena is part of my family as well too. Um, in terms of my hobbies, getting to know me a little bit more, um, I love hiking, camping, live music, which again, fingers crossed, will be soon. Um, I am poetry, rock climbing, thrifting, and hammocking. So uh, lots of lots of hobbies. Um, in terms of how I utilize, um, how kind of like um, where I come into the product development process and how I utilize Miro. Um, so similar to Kimbra, I'm kind of early on in that process. Um, I help teams understand our users and their problems, um, really understanding the problem and, and getting to the meat of that before we get into solutions. But I do help our teams brainstorm ideas 
and bring those ideas to life with designs, um, iterate through them, test them, validate them. Um, and we use Miro quite a bit for a variety of things, whether it's upfront in um, creating our user personas or doing empathy mapping, whether it's going through and generating ideas and even sometimes, um, you know, where we're storing all of our user feedback that we're getting on designs and, and during our testing as well too. I will pass it back over to Kimbra. Yeah, and Bree's open to connect as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, what's the next hour and 30-ish minutes of your life hold? Well, you guys had a great panel um, with so many great folks from just different industries and hearing some of the, the questions that came across and some of the ways that they talked about um, how they're approaching product development, how even they're organizing their, their teams was really um, interesting, inspiring, kind of thought-provoking. So we're hoping to um, live up to that awesome panel that just took place, but we're going to be focused on um, how distributed teams can collaborate better, innovate at, at scale, stay connected no matter what the future of work brings. Again, Miro being like a key part of that for each in our block. Um, and we're along for the journey with you guys. So we're hoping, Brie and I are really hoping to, to learn as much from you as you guys might learn from some of the successes that we've had. We've also had some pain points. There's uh, we definitely don't own the space, if that makes sense, um, when it comes to collaborating better, but we'd like to share some things that have worked well for us. Um, and then just a real quick agenda. So we're kind of in a welcome. We're going to do a warm up and kind of a get to know you next. We won't take a ton of time there, but then we'll get into aligning on definitions and principles because that's that's uh, pretty important as it relates to um, just... Um, how we talk about things, how we refer to things, um, how Miro has helped us, and then being better together, which is a principle that we have at HR Block, which is really about being people centric, being inclusive and collaborative. And we're going to have different focus tips and templates across those three areas. Um, and then we'll do a wrap up if we have any time. We'll see uh, to have some quick QA. Otherwise, we'll kind of jump to a retro. But um, Pre-apologize for moving kind of quickly, but just to remind you guys, you will have access to the board once we're done. So we will bounce to our next board. So we're going to now do a warm up, and I do want to point out we have uh, kind of our rocket emoji that's indicative of hey, we're welcoming you to interact. This is a place where you can um, add stickies, so on and so forth. So Bree, I'm going to let you kind of bring everyone to you and walk us through our tips. There we go. So everybody should now see. Perfect. Yeah. So um, outside of the rocket, which is going to be an ongoing motif in, in the workshop, um, there's some other just kind of housekeeping tips that we want to go over as well, too. So um, some of you may be brand new to Miro um, and some of you may be pros, but just level setting on some tips. So the top menu that you're going to see in the top right of your screen is going to um, give you a couple options, which honestly, one thing I like to do right away is turn off cursors because I, I get overwhelmed with them. But sometimes people like to see those to um, see all the cursors um, that are available and where people are. So you can use that little icon if you wanna hide or show cursors. Um, you can also follow people by clicking on their icon, or you might, um, like in our case, we'll bring people to us. Um, and then also down in your left menu, you're going to see some options that are going to be pretty integral for part of this workshop today. So um, the arrow, you're going to be able to alternate between a selection tool and a hand tool, but you can either click the V on your keyboard or you can press this icon here and it's going to alternate between selecting items, um, which will be the arrow whenever that's highlighted. Or if you um, choose it again, it's going to turn to a hand and that's how you can navigate around on your board. Um, you can also hold down the space key on your menu and drag the board around as well too. So this is an example. I held down the space and I can drag the board around for some quick navigation. And then this here that Lindsay is um, displaying or demoing for you is how you can get in and add post-its. So um, the icon on the left is going to be how you can add post-its. And this is going to be um, a very big part of our workshop today as well too. And so you can also do that by um, pressing in and then you're going to see the panel pop up and you can drag on a post-it. Um, we'll also have post-its available in most of the um, activities or all of the activities that we do today as well too. But feel free to um, just try it out real quick if you want. Yeah, test it out. Make sure you guys are comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. Hi, Jack. <laughs> Sticky, Jonathan. And you can resize stickies as well too by um, 
by um, getting in the corners. Okay, and then one last thing. Yeah, I was going to say, Brie, when it comes to resizing stickies, it's been, in, I mean, Miro really is an infinite artboard, guys. I mean, that's how we kind of view it at Block. You'll hear me say Block. Sorry, it's the abbreviation for HR Block. It's our, it's our nickname for it. Sticky Jungle. Uh, <laughs> there's all kinds of fun things that you can do with stickies if you guys haven't figured out. But it's crazy how small you can make it and how big you can make it, too. So that's yeah. awesome. One last um, final piece of information is that's helpful is you can simplify your screen, get some menus out of the way that won't necessarily be um, used today. And that's the bottom menu. If you see something like this, click those little arrows, it's gonna collapse that menu for you. And then also if you see something like this in the bottom right of your screen, it's kind of giving you almost like a roadmap of the view, but we're not going to necessarily use that today. So you can also, um, you can also close that as well too. Cool. All right, well, I think we're gonna assume everyone's pretty comfortable with um, just Miro overall. Um, I'll bring everyone to me and we'll continue moving through. So we're gonna take just a minute or two to get to know you. For those who were able to join the panel, we've already got this like amazing blue, gorgeous map of all the pins from everywhere. There are extra pins here. Um, if you guys wanna take advantage of those and, um, grab one if you weren't able to actually add where you're located in the panel earlier, if you're just joining the workshop. Um, and kind of take just a second and let us know where you're at. This is fantastic. Whoa, Jack, I meant to lock that. I'm so sorry. Do a control Z for me, Jack, and it'll move back. There we go. I'll lock that to make that easier to work with. There we go. We're good to go. This is fantastic, guys. Lots of folks from South America. Oh, we got a comment. Copenhagen. Christine, thank you. Fantastic. So, uh, Brielle, I'll kind of pass it off to you uh, for our next little chat here. Absolutely. And I'm loving seeing all the pins. Like, there's some concentrations, of course, but I'm loving seeing some of the, you know, sort of rogue pins that are out in the, out in the corner. So excited to have everybody here. Um, the next thing we're going to do, this is going to be the official um, testing out of stickies in a real setting. Um, so you're going to see a lot of piles of stickies um, at the bottom. And I will I will bring everybody to me again as well, too. You're going to see some stickies at the, the bottom of the screen here. And what we want you to do is just pull a sticky from this pile down into or up into this open space here. And just let us know, um, you know, what's your title? What company are you with? Mm -hmm. Uh, what's your role? If you're not with the company, if you're freelance, you know, throw that out there. Yeah. Um, and we'll start, we'll kind of get a feel for not just where people are, but also who they are. Mm -hmm. It'll be really interesting to breed to see just kind of the cross-functional group of folks that we have today. Okay. I see another senior UX designer. Mm -hmm. friend. Agile coach. Yep. Adrian Block. Product designers and managers, project managers. Love yep. that we're doing project managers in the space. Director of design. Pamela. <laughs> a little web producer. Okay. Yeah. UX lead. Innovation manager, Jack, that's rad. Researchers. Oh yeah, I'm glad that we have some researchers in here too. No, another agile coach. I love it. Agile, all the things, y'all. Mm -hmm. Well, happy to have you all here. Yeah, this is fantastic. Thanks for sharing um, your role and um, who you work with. It's fantastic. Cool. All right. Awesome. Well, I'll bring everybody my way and we'll just keep kind of moving through if that's cool. So I think probably a good grounding activity before we get into some tips and uh, ideas that we have to share with you is let's align on product development just in general. Like the whole thing can be confusing to align on. And I just want to be really clear here. Like we're today, we're definitely not going to try to necessarily align on what the product development cycle is or means or it's it can be pretty subjective especially depending on the industry that you're in 
And those different flavors are totally cool. Um, we kind of lean into those, embrace those, work with them. But um, we'll also kind of focus on the human centricity of it all, because so long as we begin and end there, I think we're going to be doing okay. Um, have you ever Googled product development? Um, and this emoji is actually very, very um, indicative of what I saw in just Google images. And there's a lot of different flows. You've got almost like this Fibonacci, um, you have the circle flows, you have more of like workflows. And there's so many different ways and different flavors of approaching it. And interestingly enough, if you even look at definitions, um, a lot of the definitions are very um, typical of focusing on process, focusing on stages or releases or activities, um, coordinating all the things, um, servicing customers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but what's important is not just to be focused on the customer experience, because um, really we're creating these products and services for people and we are people ourselves. So today we'll be kind of focused on um, the employee experience too, which would be us and our peers. Um, and that's what you'll see us kind of heavily focusing. So there's different ways you can define it. Um, I asked a couple of folks from within uh, H&R Block to give us their take on product and what that means in product development. Um, Liz Sweeney is an agile coach um, within our IT org. Um, she's also a heavy, Miro fan. We are currently as part of our Bureau Enterprise account. We actually have a heavy IT presence. It's been extremely exciting. So to her, a product can be anything from an idea to something digital to something physical. And I, I, I feel like we can all probably kind of agree with that. Um, the unifying question to her is that does development of this product create some benefit in the marketplace? And then also when people the people actually developing the product have a clear line of sight to how it's working in the marketplace, it's enormously motivating. I think a lot of times we'll kind of, we'll, we'll do these amazing releases and then there won't be kind of this follow through to say, hey, here's, here's where our wins are. Um, so Liz, I appreciate, I know you're on the workshop today and I appreciate your thoughts. Uh, I also asked just kind of in contrast, um, Scott Runkle, who's our VP of uh, customer experience within the product experience org that Bree and I are in. Um, and his take on is that as product and design leaders, we have an enormous impact at scale. The methods um, and frameworks that we use, if rooted in human-centered problems, can be applied to really any problem, any industry, and can be found useful um, and provide meaningful solutions. So, and his, his take on it is that we therefore have potential to leave this planet in a better place that we found it. And so I wanna take a moment just to ask kind of, you know, fundamentally, how would you define product development and what does it mean to you? And Brie, I'll kind of pass it off to you as well. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see what starts to come in. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be anything fancy. I mean, it could just be a, a, a word. Like when we say product development, even one word. Right. Yeah, Liz and Scott, you know, we're a little in depth with their descriptions, but feel free to just, like Kimber said, just throw out a word, throw out a phrase. And we'll pick a few to, Brie will pick a few to maybe highlight and kind of read out. Let's see what is coming in. We've got solving problems for people that are worth solving for a business. That's good. Mm -hmm. so you're bringing in the business aspect of it as well, too. Mm -hmm. Creating value to humans not the organizations. Yeah. User Creating problem. value for customer and users. Structured yes. problem solving. I That's really great. like that. Yeah. Creating a tool for people in an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. Creating products through consideration and needs, tools, impact, and collaboration. Ooh, creating meaning. I think creating meaning is um, distinct but impactful, and I've heard that. So, great. Well, that's fantastic, and it's so succinct. Love that. Love that. I think we're talking to the right folks today, Bree. <laughs> this is fantastic, guys. Solving problems, people that are we're solving for business. Yep, developing solutions with delight. That's excellent, guys. 
Mm -hmm. Think big, act small. I like that. Teamwork. Yep. And teamwork that's cross-functional too. Teamwork that's uh, within your functional area is super important for sure. Um, but having that cross-functional reach and engagements, something we'll be also um, kind of leaning into today. Awesome. Okay, cool. Well, I'm gonna kind of move this through Brie. That's cool. Um, so we'll just take just a minute just to kind of align on maybe some um, principles. Uh, and when we're thinking principles, the whole idea is that principles are kind of greater than process in this moment in time and what we're talking about and kind of what we have learned at, at Block Now. Process is super important. Do not take this as me saying that process is not important. But while it's important, it's really less about the approach. And we found kind of more about the principles that drive the approach. And um, for our company, and perhaps yours too, there's kind of this um, ongoing set of beliefs and behaviors that we try to live by. But before we get into those, let's unpack just really quickly um, our focus area for today. So we're talking about facilitating collaborative product development. Um, let's just unpack facilitating for just a moment. It's something that, um, and you guys might even in the chat, if you want to drop in what facilitation or facilitating means to you. Um, whenever I think of facilitating, it's something that's intentional to get the right people together, um, whether it's in a quote unquote workshop environment or not. Uh, it fosters a safe environment where people can communicate. I think if you're um, facilitating really well, um, that environment's kind of being cultivated. It seeks to also build a shared understanding with everyone involved. And that can be really difficult at times to do. Um, and part of the exercises and tips that we're sharing today kind of helps you guys um, learn from how we've been able to do that successfully. And then it leverages tools like Miro <laughs> and techniques to empower. Um, Cause really, again, it's all about people um, for people. When it comes to collaboration, and again, welcome anything within chat that you guys wanna share about what you think collaboration means. It's that ongoing journey, it's not a destination. I feel that's something I wanna camp on for like two seconds. <laughs> um, you could be like, wow, we really collaborated great yesterday. Well, how are we gonna collaborate great today, great tomorrow? How do we continue that? Um, this also needs to be intentional, especially in our new normal. I don't know about you guys, but I, I, I know from the panel, I can't remember who brought it up that, you know, they really miss those water cooler conversations. Um, I've been trying to go out of my way to connect with folks because um, collaboration is really about relationship and building that. So being intentional, with it, especially in kind of the virtual space is really important. Um, collaborative um, activities also are inclusive. They invite new ideas and ways of working. Um, and it's incredibly difficult um, in cultures that don't encourage it. I've worked places where I had some pretty hefty pain points when it came to collaboration. There were a lot of silos. Um, unfortunately, we had a lot of um, silos that were being reinforced just by lack of process. Um, so finding creative ways to draw people out of their cubes or away from their desk or whatever the context is to help them work together better um, is something that we seek to do. And then product development. We just had you guys share out kind of what you think it means, um, but just at a high level, it's a process that varies across companies. Again, it doesn't matter how we distinctly define it as much as how we approach it. So it really does take a cross-functional team. Um, sometimes we find it's difficult to get out of our silos to do that. We even have that problem at h and Block. Um, it can easily be driven by a backlog instead of what our uh, consumers need. That's a key thing that we found that starting with customer needs and then working backwards um, is really the way to approach good product development. And its output is actually reflective of those who created it. Um, if you look at the .com for any specific company, you can actually kind of almost get a glimpse into their company and culture based on um, that website, essentially. And then when it comes to us, I mentioned earlier, kind of a set of behaviors and beliefs that helps us. And whatever you call it, if it's a principle, a value, belief, fill in the blank, it's a truth that you believe, it's something that you're that you're standing on. It's a philosophy that you subscribe to. 
some way that you're trying to act um, or something that you hold fast to you. And it, um, each in our block, we have seven that we try to really kind of focus on. And what's interesting is um, this is the first company I've been a part of that has kind of this list of values um, and behaviors. We call them behaviors because they require intention and action. But um, while companies um, from a cultural perspective, like changing that can be difficult, sometimes impossible. As a facilitator, we have been empowered. We have the power, especially with um, great tools like Miro, et cetera, to help to cultivate a culture of interactions between the teams that we are able to impact. So I'm exhibiting that change just that you want to see in your company. One workshop, one person at a time is really key. And when it comes to really all the different behaviors we have at Block, uh, Miro has really made us better together. And that really ultimately, if we can narrow down all of the principles and things we believe in, if we can be better together, then we can have and find the success that we need. Brie, I'll kind of pass it off to you for some convo here. Looks like we got some folks already diving in. I know, they're jump starters. So um, similar to the last activity, we want to get your thoughts. You know, we've we've shared with you what block values um, and, and what our behaviors are, but we want to hear from you what principles or beliefs do you feel are important mm -hmm. specifically to foster that collaborative environment. So start throwing them out there um, and we'll see what comes out. Shepherding to serve, that's fantastic. That's excellent. I think somebody heard um, the word shepherd because now my <laughs> now my Australian shepherd just popped his head. <laughs> She's like, are you talking about me? <laughs> Your head just pop up. <laughs> so respecting one another, providing transparency between the community, listen and not only hear. Yep listening and not just hearing that's good mm -hmm. providing different ways to collaborate and engage i think that's that's very true very important that we're being um that we have various ways right mm -hmm. provide space for all voices inclusivity that's important psychological mm -hmm. safety to fail or be wrong um that's that's great i think having an environment that fosters that um like a safe environment right mm -hmm. it's really key Equity and voice and opinions, absolutely. Joy, that's good. I love that. As simple as that, trust, respect, and feeling a lot about trust, empathy. There are no silly questions, that's great. I think that goes back to that safe space, right? Mm -hmm. Making sure that we all um, respect one another, trust one another. Trust. trust ownership adaptability Adap yeah that's that's very true i think that goes back to your point kimbra about um it's a journey right so adapting and being flexible along the way mm -hmm. unpacking the complexity that's great oh let's see this one down here listening and being curious with a desire to continuously learn absolutely networking across departments so that goes to that cross-functional right mm -hmm. This is great. Yeah, these are all, these are all yeah. awesome. And I'm seeing a lot of um, a lot of parallels, Kimbra, between between what I'm seeing here and what um, we have planned to review today. So I yeah, no, definitely. Um, yeah, we're going to be getting into a lot of um, focus on <clears throat> being people centric, being inclusive, being collaborative, um, and hopefully it's something that um, can help you guys. And again, that we can kind of learn from you guys as well as we have breakouts and ask for your feedback. So defining what success means. That's great. Okay, well, I'm gonna keep us kind of moving if everybody wants to follow me. Um, so we have um, multiple teams at Block <laughs> that have fallen in love with Miro since we recently set up our enterprise account. Um, and one of our biggest um, fans is Vanessa Jupi. She is the VP of digital products and services and also kind of uh, hashtag career goals for Brie and I, because she's amazing. Um, I asked her to give her take on product, um, our topic today of facilitating collaborative product development um, and like Miro, like how Miro has empowered her team. And right now we're, we're going through a transformation of culture, technology, and talent. So like even without COVID, and I'm going to kind of paraphrase this because she wrote a novel and I'm in love with it. It's great. But um, even 
what she found that even without COVID, they knew, her team knew that there needed to be a way to evolve how they brainstormed, how they planned, how they shared across the enterprise, um, how they're working better across silos. Um, anywhere where she comments me, I just wanna make sure that you guys know it's Bureau making me look good. So um, for those of, of us who've seen like companies evolve, we know that bringing in right talent can be critical. Um, but ultimately, I, 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 even before coming to HR Block, have been using Miro and finding it very effective in helping teams to collaborate. I've even also used um, PowerPoint, even before having something like Miro to do kind of um, cross functional um, distributed team type collaboration. But they actually found um, engaging various teams throughout the enterprise. Um, and gathering adoption advocacy and then eventually bringing in Miro as an enterprise solution as being like an unlock for their team. I've been really proud to see just how active they've been out there and how they've been open to um, different ways of working together. So, and this is kind of my favorite part. So using Miro's, Miro, my team, my teams have now created strategic alignment plans, culture workshops, communication plans, journey maps, roadmaps, like all the things. Um, and in many ways coming closer together, even while COVID has forced them apart. And I just wanna clarify that Miro didn't ask us to put this together. They're just kind of that special to us at h and Block. Um, and I, I would love to hear in chat, if you guys want to, how Miro has perhaps helped your enterprise or the company that you've worked at. Um, feel free to add those thoughts if you want. And Brie, I'm gonna pass it off to you just to talk about being better together and what that means. Yeah, so I will bring everyone to me again. And as Kimber touched on, better together is one of our key behaviors at Block and, and one that um, really encompasses that collaborative, inclusive, people-centered um, product development that we're going to really start to highlight today. Mm -hmm. uh, but one thing that I want to call out is honestly, um, this is how it's truly defined, like by the business in our in our um, behavior documentation. And so it, it just keyed it up as perfectly as we could have imagined. Um, to really, to really uh, foster, I think, that collaboration. Um, and so basically how we explain it or how we define it at Block, um, the actual definition of it is that we understand teamwork is required to win and how you get results um, matters. We also actively seek input from others and know that diversity is crucial to our success. Um, I actually saw a little while ago, um, somebody called out in the chat that diversity and inclusion was a big, a big piece mm -hmm. of product development um, and facilitation uh, cycle as well too. So if you kind of boil that down to, it basically goes to what goes in, you know, and what comes out. And if we put in that teamwork that comes from that description, meaning being people centered, and if we put in diversity, um, which is being inclusive, and if we seek input along the way, if we're collaborative, then what comes out of it is ultimately overall better, better all across the board. You're gonna have better overall execution. So it's gonna be a smoother process um, and not only is it going to be smoother, it's going to be more efficient. So you're going to be able to get through the product development cycle quicker because alignment happens quicker. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the end, you're going to have more successful outcomes because they've been rooted in that collaboration um, and inclusivity along the way. And you were able to align um, with more people, do it quicker, um, gather more ideas, brainstorm together, and ultimately you're going to have better outcomes um, in the end. And that really, you know, kind of is dependent on this notion of teamwork. So if we look at teamwork, you know, you, you do have this, which, and we're not, we're not trying to say that this is not important. It is important um, to have those functional teams and have teamwork within your functional lines. But specifically, whenever we think about the larger product development um, life cycle and how inclusivity and collaboration works, um, it really comes down to that cross-functional uh, side of things. So making sure that we're bringing everybody to the table. Um, and not only do they have a seat, but they also have a voice at the table, right? And so um, we'll kind of touch on some ways to, to bring all of those people together and how you can how you can do it effectively. Cool, thank you, Bree. So as we kind of think on how we might um, focus on these three areas, again, it's about being people-centered, being inclusive, being collaborative we're going to, for the remainder of our time, kind of jump into some tips of things that we've learned, um, which I'll be generally covering those. And then Brielle kind of share out templates and tools that we found that's been helpful. And some of these are right now being um, 
drafted to be submitted to Miroverse. And they'll be kind of a beefier version than what you see here. So be on the lookout for h and Block out on Miroverse soon, um, just to make it a lot easier for you to leverage any of the tools that you saw in the workshop today um, that you might've found helpful. So when we talk about being people-centered, um, when a diverse group of people come together, um, a problem is really approached in all different ways. And we're able to uncover some pretty unique opportunities and perspectives. Um, and what we've learned, we just have a few tips here. Um, when it comes to being people centric, having the right people in the room can be hard sometimes. And I put this as number one, because I know as much as we want to try to be inclusive, um, we get a lot of, well, they're going to be busy. Don't even, we're going to, you know, we're going to, I've kind of learned, don't be afraid to ask. And if they can't come together, that's fine, but finding creative ways to get them involved is important. So um, planning ahead so that resources can be dedicated and not distracted um, is pretty key if you're able to do that. Um, identifying a consultant that can kind of jump in and out versus like attending something that you're facilitating that might be longer term. Um, sometimes you have to negotiate with folks' times and that's kind of to be expected, but when it comes to bringing the right people together as a facilitator, you're really only as strong as the cross-functional team that you've been able to curate for the work that you're doing and having that top of mind and planning to the best of your ability um, to make it easier for more, more people to um, come in and be a part, even if it's just for a portion of what you're doing is really crucial. Um, another tip, uh, meeting people where they are is key. So not everyone's used to collaborating or Miro. <laughs> so um, we've had to be pretty flexible and gracious uh, when it comes to just workshopping. It's like, it's something that just kind of comes along the way. You could build an amazing, like very process focused workshop that's very ABCD. And at times you need to pivot and being open to that, not being and fearful of that and kind of having that mindset to serve is really um, important. And then starting your workshops with an onboarding step, kind of like we did um, to help get folks used to Miro, we found very um, successful. And making it safe for folks to ask questions, um, create pauses. That's actually an intentional part of a lot of the workshopping that I do, where I actually will have a moment where it's like, okay, let's take a moment. You guys doing all right? <laughs> Um, fostering and protecting an environment that welcomes differing viewpoints and dialogues. I know that it can be tough sometimes, um, especially if you're facilitating to um, have that kind of open dialogue and then also kind of manage it. But um, we found that if you allow moments of that structured discussion, but keep it time boxed so that everyone kind of stays on track, that is actually beneficial to moving things forward. But again, having it time boxed, having it structured is really important and welcoming deeper discussion where time allows and asking questions to draw people out of their shell. Um, definitely not calling on you to pull out all the introverts out of the audience and put them on the spot, but where it feels comfortable, asking those questions to kind of draw them out. Um, folks will most of the time be appreciative later on um, if done um, intentionally and thoughtfully. And having a parking lot to pull off topic items to let people, you know, drop things that may be unrelated, but kind of, um, kind of over to the edge, uh, maybe make a spot in the mirror board, make a spot in your room, use a PowerPoint, use whatever to have that. But this we found is really kind of an unlock um, to allow us to be more people centric. And then finally, making it engaging and ener energizing. So protecting the energy in the room, energy can make or break a workshop. Um, elevating it in any way that you can. And a lot of that is just protecting your team from distractions and removing any stressors um, that might get their head out of the game. And then having those pulse checks, those pauses, um, which by the way, how's everybody doing? I guess, let us know in chat how you're doing. If you guys have a second, tell us if you're good, if you're confused, if you're lost. <laughs> and then Bri, I'm gonna pass it off to you and you can kind of dive into some templates that they could probably use. You got it. So I will pull everybody to me again. And what we're going to walk you through is um, templates for each of these, um, kind of each of the sections that we'll go over. So specifically, here are three, just three examples that you can use of templates um, where you can really focus on that people-centered aspect of it. Um, and if you see the little icons down at the bottom that have um, that better together kind of badge at the bottom, that means that that's something that we've created a block and also that um, is either in the process of being submitted to Miroverse or will be in the future. So you can kind of look out for those um, 
mad props to Kimbra for, for working through all of those and getting those out to the mirrorverse. Um, but basically starting off with the stakeholder or RACI map. So this is, if for people who are unfamiliar, um, this is where you're going through and identifying who should be involved in a project or an initiative and at what level. So it's identifying sometimes it might be a team, um, it might be a person, um, and you can put you can put from varying levels of whether it's just responsible, accountable, consulted, informed, um, and you can do this as a group, you know, with two to four people. Um, and this is really, I think this sets the foundation of just understanding who needs to be invo involved in this um, project and also who um, the varying level of roles and responsibilities, right? And then the icebreaker, which we're going to do in our first breakout here in a moment, um, is going to be essentially just that, an icebreaker, right? But I think it, it takes it a level deeper and it makes it a little hardier to where it's not simply just, what's your name, what's your role? But it is going through and saying, what is your, you know, your name, your title? Um, Kimbra likes to throw in these um, funny, you know, funny questions like our hot dog sandwiches. Um, and kind of just like making it a little bit light. I've seen some things um, where people have talked about what was the last Google search that they did on their phone, right? Um, and just kind of fun things like that. And then also, um, I like the, we like the idea of, of going also with a question of like, what would you like to get out today? Or something that's a little more thoughtful. So that way you can sort of get an idea of where everybody's coming from. Um, and then, you know, we, in this example, we've done picking your emoji that kind of indicates like, what's your spirit emoji? Um, Mine's a taco brie. <laughs> but is that a sandwich? Is a taco a sandwich? I don't know. Is a taco a sandwich? Post in chat. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Is a taco a sandwich? And if it's not a sandwich, what is it? No, right. Sweeney. <laughs> <laughs> I will point out, uh, Brie, if you scroll up just a tad, we have dropped some links that are, I don't know. Uh, yeah, scroll up a little bit more. We have dropped some links in these sections. Like, here's 55 great icebreaker questions that you can add. Like we'll, we'll typically have one that's kind of serious and one that's kind of fun, but we're also linking out to some stuff that Miro's posted, which has been great about like even the stakeholder map and how to do it. And they even have kind of a different take on it than how we've done it. So there's no like hardcore straight laced way to do a lot of this stuff. Do what works, make it adapt, make it your own. And all of these as well, you're gonna have access to the mirror board after the fact. And so all of these can simply just be copy and pasted into your own mirror board. So feel free to, to snag them. Mm -hmm. um, this one is a Miro example. And so this is a team charter, similar to say like a stakeholder map. Um, it does outline like key team members. But what I like about this one is that it's, it digs a little bit deeper into not just who's part of the team and let's get to know them a little bit more, but also as a team, what do we want to align on in terms of like our core values, group norms, um, varying levels of roles, and also like what does success mean for us? Um, a call out here that I really like is if you only have time to do um, just one piece of it, mm -hmm. definitely stick with the group norms because I think that level sets on, on um, it, it goes back to what Kimberly was saying about the energy, the energy of the team and making sure that we're all on the same page about what respect means and what um, what we expect out of, out of one another in the team. Um, so this is great to... I think really foster that good culture and energy um, within the team. So that being said, um, I alluded to the fact that we're going to do the icebreaker as our first breakout. Yeah. So um, I will pass it over to Kimbra to kind of explain how this breakout will work. Cool. Um, well, for those who um, are still kind of hanging out with us, thank you for um, being a part of what we're doing, but we want to give you guys time to get to know each other and talk. Um, so what we're doing is kind of facilitating, I think with the folks that we have, um, we're gonna try to keep, uh, um, kind of break out everybody across rooms where it makes sense, but you might see Bree and I popping in and out of different rooms to help out if needed, or see how you guys are doing, doing some pulse checks. But um, Ashley, um, who's great. Uh, she is the uh, mural breakout queen. She's going to be kind of sending us to our different breakouts. And we're going to have essentially throughout the workshop, three different ones, and you'll be with the same folks each time. So um, get to know each other, but that should take just a minute. And then once you guys get into your breakout, just go ahead and kind of quickly introduce yourself. Um, pick someone maybe to keep time to keep an eye on things. Cause you guys will really just have probably about six minutes or so in their first breakout to work through the activity of just the icebreaker that we talked about. And really, like Bree said, um, 
I, I just put just a couple of questions here um, and folks you'll be you'll be double clicking to kind of add your name here and then you'll be grabbing a sticky and dragging it up here and kind of answering the questions that you're seeing so um, I did notice that some stuff looks like it may not be brought to the front if you guys have that problem Bree if you'll help me kind of move through and bring emojis and stickies to the front kind of across everything I just noticed that I think some stuff might be hidden so okay looks like we're good so Ashley, I'll let you kind of take charge and uh, get us coordinated, lady. Great, everyone. All the rooms are open, so feel free to join. And I will see you guys there. Cool. We're in breakout room number one. So we're right here. So our first question is, what do you do? And we're going to put our names. And then what is your top struggle within product development? Your name. I'll put mine on a sticky. And I actually am an event coordinator, so I actually don't have any struggles with product development. Um, I'm here representing Miro, but I'd be curious to see what you guys. Um, share with the team uh, what your top struggle is. Look. How many of you guys use Miro on a daily basis? I don't well, use Miro. <laughs> oh, so it, this is yeah. your first time? Not daily, but a lot, a lot of the time. Okay, great. I uh, used before for workshops, but not for work. You're trying to get your team to use it more, Michelle? Yeah, I'm hoping it'll replace uh, so much use of just text-based. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Let's see, prioritization we have, cross collaboration, cross silos. Yeah, not getting stuck in silos. That's a huge thing. Um, making sure that everyone is informed on what's taking place. Um, I, I experienced that just in my day-to-day -day work is a lot of information is siloed and you don't have it all to make a really good um, sound decision. Design value and business, design value for business and process, Adriana. Yes. Yeah, um, I work at a, a telecom company. Mm -hmm. uh, we make a lot of B two B business, and we don't have a design or a user centric culture. So, I'm really the lone wolf with chief designers under me trying to make things happen. So it's really hard. For every meeting that I have, I have to do a PPT to tell people about what is the value of, of the stuff that I do. So it's pretty, it's, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone else want to share? I see Ian, you have waterfall. R&D schedule, can you, can you give us a little bit more context on that? If you're open to sharing, or maybe even put it um, in the chat. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so I, I, work in a, I, I work in a company that's very, um, let's just say we have a very aggressive culture. <laughs> um, and so like the way that these these timelines get decided is is so arbitrary and just so top down mm -hmm. that by the time it gets 
to, okay, we need to research the problem. We need to design the problem. You know, I, it's rare when I have more than two days <laughs> to turn something around. Right. Yeah. And it's, then, then it's just like, okay, getting to the next thing, getting to the next thing, getting to the next thing. So we really don't strategize right now. Um, and we're just kind of moving from one beat to the next and the end result is usually a, a poor experience. So, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of, uh, where, where we are and where I'm coming from. So how do we flip the script? Right. Yep. Is the... That makes sense. Awesome. Let's see how everyone else is. Let's sneak and see what else some other teams are talking about alignment teams and goals, aligning business, coming up with the convincing product vision. Very cool. Awesome. Who chose, what emojis did you guys choose? I chose the strawberry, or I chose a butterfly. Adrian, are you sick? <laughs> I see you chose a, a mask. Unicorn Amanda, very cool. Awesome, well, it looks like we are gonna be closing the breakout rooms here in the next few seconds. Um, we're gonna be going back to the same breakout room, so I'll catch you guys here in a bit and we can all return back over to the main room and I'll catch you guys there. And we're back. And everybody's back. Coming back. Still kind of rolling back. <laughs> so how was is, how is the first uh, breakout, guys? Do you guys feel like you're getting to know people and seeing some thumbs up? That's great. I'm not seeing anyone freaking out yet, so that's good. <laughs> how did you guys find the emoji activity? It's It, it can be pretty fun. And it's really interesting when you see the emojis folks choose and then you kind of ask them to unpack it a little bit. That can actually get into some really fun conversation with folks. Yeah, it was short, Misu. Yeah, it definitely was short. I promise the next ones are going to be a little bit longer. Um, so great. Well, you guys kind of work through one of the activities that uh, Bree shared with you. And we'll continue in the breakouts to kind of choose one of the templates that she shares to have you guys kind of test it out. So. Um, so when it comes to being people centric and getting to know each other, icebreakers are great um, just to keep people chatting. Uh, I will ask if you guys can remember the room that you were in previously, um, because when we do breakouts again, um, we encourage you to, to rejoin your room, um, just to jump out there and kind of continue to have those conversations with folks that you just met. So that's awesome. All right, well, I'm gonna bring everybody to me and we'll keep kind of strolling along. So the second part of this is really about being inclusive. So, and what's interesting about people centricity, inclusiveness and collaboration, they do kind of overlap to some degree. So you might find some things where, hey, would that have fit better under this other, well, it's all about um, just teamwork and facilitating collaborative product development. So, um, you will probably see some overlap in some of the things that we're doing, but when we're talking about inclusiveness, Obviously inclusiveness is important um, just across the universe, um, not just in product development, but whenever we're talking about it in this context, it's really about creating a workplace that's inclusive. Um, and it really is an ongoing effort. It's not, it's a journey as opposed to somewhere where you land, but building that environment for your workshop team to work in um, is well within your influence, even though sometimes it can feel pretty um, intense when you're trying to deal with it from a larger company perspective, but just know that the folks that you're with within that specific amount of time, like you have that influence and can help in that way. And what we've learned kind of number one with inclusiveness is, and this is an unlock, communicating inclusively and visually so that everyone has a shared understanding. And I don't know who originally designed this illustration, but I've been in love with it ever since I first saw it. And if you're just chatting with folks, it's pretty easy to say, okay, hey, we agree. But what I've learned is to start to unpack things with folks 
to understand exactly what it is that they're singing, to try to understand the context and the background from which they come. And a good way to do that is to actually visualize, to actually uh, draw that out of folks, to actually externalize it in some way. And that's something that Nero helps us with. But if you can get that externalization happening, you can kind of realize in the line on, oh, wait a minute, I thought about this completely differently. But then you can come together and identify, oh, okay, so if we connect the dots in these ways, we can actually come to a common shared understanding of how we perceive. So I encourage you in any way that you can to kind of help folks externalize those ideas and the activities that we'll show you will um, hopefully help give you some ideas on how to do that. And the second one is really giving everyone a seat at the table. That can be hard, um, depending on what kind of stakeholders or teams that you're working with. But um, in your role in facilitation, it's important to treat everyone equally. Um, it doesn't matter if they're an exec or a business analyst in the room, ensuring everyone has a voice and is heard, um, no matter how introverted, <laughs> but please don't put them on the spot. <laughs> Find creative ways to draw them out. Um, and being that tireless uh, advocate for equality in your company is something that um, should pay some pretty heavy dividends over time. And the third one is really don't ignore or overlook the introverts. And I think I've talked about introverts three times already. The reason that they're so quiet is because they're thinkers. And at times I, I feel like I'm really more of an introvert than an extrovert, honestly. I think at the end of the day, I'm just, I feel drained. If I've hung out with people for too long. So I don't know what that is. If it's kind of in between, are there some in between folks out there that aren't hardcore introvert or hardcore extrovert? You find yourself kind of in the middle. Is there anyone that feels that way? Um, in workshops, it's easy to listen to the loudest voice, but instead listening to the quietest one um, and seek to draw them out. That's actually, um, I found that actually to be very powerful. Be careful not to scare them back into their shell, but giving them a time box structure and a safe place to share. Um, I found a lot of folks come out of their shell and um, what they say is actually quite powerful. And providing various ways for teams, uh, team members to contribute. So not everyone learns the same way. Not everyone's gonna contribute in the same way and that's okay. Finding ways to work with your team in ways that makes the collaboration easy for them um, is really key and then considering um, consider integrating like various ways to collaborate. So it could be visual, auditory, hands-on, et cetera. And Bree's gonna kind of jump into some activities and templates that might be able to help. And we'll be walking through one of these in the next breakout that's coming up. Yeah, so I brought everybody back to me. And the first one we're gonna walk through is actually the one that we will be doing in the next breakout. It's called How Might We's, or you might see it um, shortened as HMW's. And what How Might We's do is that it, it really encourages um, brainstorming and it kind of flips our natural perspectives on their head. So if you break down specifically, how might we, um, the how is open-minded, it leaves room for ideas, basically saying that there is a way to, to brainstorm on this um, problem. The might is, is optimistic, right? It starts to generate ideas. Um, and then the we is very collaborative and inclusive, saying how can we do it together? So what the how might we do is, and again, you can pull these into your own boards after um, after the workshop and, and utilize them. Um, but what the how might we do is it starts to um, really get to, it's not solutionizing, but it really starts to hone in on what are all the opportunities or the problems that we could solve and, and address. Um, and some tips here is that, you know, trying to be um, succinct but descriptive and also making sure that we're not solutionizing that you are like in the case of this example um, that you're not saying how might we put a button at the top of the page but instead you're saying how could we or how might we increase conversions so it starts to um, get into really what are the problems make some descriptives or makes them uh, descriptive and then um, another one that's great for this kind of point in the flow is also an empathy map so um, you know, me coming from a user experience standpoint is I really like to hone in on how can we empathize with our users. And I think this goes back to honestly, all of our, all of the points that we've brought up today is inclusivity, collaboration, and people centered. Um, but an empathy map goes through and highlights, you know, what our users are saying, what they're thinking, what they're feeling, what they're doing, and everybody contributes to this together. Um, and it helps you draw empathy for your for your users and um, starts to align on that shared understanding. And then that way, whenever you go into dissecting that problem and starting to ideate 
Um, it gives you that strong foundation as well too. And then the last one is that's also really um, effective and beneficial as well is something called expert interviews. And so expert interviews are where you um, engage somebody from, you know, it could be cross-functional collaboration or a subject matter expert, um, and you engage them in an area that maybe you're not as familiar about, or maybe other people um, on your team are not as familiar about. And you essentially um, can coordinate multiple sessions if you want to learn from multiple people. And you conduct this interview, capture um, all of their answers. You can actually put in your like you know thoughts or additional questions that you may have, um, quotes that they may have. Um, and it really helps you. It's sharing that knowledge um, and leveraging subject matter expert um, knowledge, but also knowing that you can take that knowledge and still create a collaborative space from that. You know, this person doesn't have to drive necessarily the entire process, but you do want to um, get that knowledge early on. So that way you're, you know, you're empowered with the knowledge. So those are a few templates. Um, and the one that I mentioned that we'll be doing in the next breakout is how might we. So I'll pass it back over to Kimbra and she will step us through this particular breakout. Cool, thank you. <laughs> So we're going to get you guys actually moving. So I know we've been chatting a lot, but um, being able to get you activated on some of the ideas that we're sharing is important. Um, if you guys will remember your breakouts, Ashley will get those going for you again, so you can kind of jump out there. But this time you'll have about um, eight minutes to follow the instructions in the breakout room. Um, and then Ashley will kind of get us back. But we have a preloaded, how might we kind of problem space for you to solve related to our topic today. So take a, take a moment to kind of read through the how to's and tips there and work through the activity and we'll see you back in the main session in a moment. Um, well, glad to have you um, participating this time. So if you guys in the, um, in the Miro space here, if you guys want to get to breakout room four again. I love that feature yeah. of, of get to the person that's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And I love bringing people to me too. Obviously, I don't want to bring everybody to me just yet. But yeah, I think that's one of my favorite features of Miro for sure. Um, okay, and it looks like we do have a timer going on at the bottom. So we'll, we've oh. got about a little under seven minutes. All so right. basically, um, well, honestly, I'd love to get some, give me a thumbs up if you have done How Might We's before, or give me a thumbs down if you have not done How Might We's. I have like a verbal sort of discussion, but not in a structured way like this. Okay. So how might we use, um, I love them. Basically you're taking a problem, which is defined here in this top kind of blue card or blue posty. And we're going to take these post-it notes from down below and you're going to drag on and kind of just say like, how might we solve this problem or how might we begin to solve this problem? Right. So we're not trying to get into solution state just yet, but how could we um, do something? So let's, let's kind of brainstorm for a second, do a practice round. Um, so the, the problem that we're trying to address is product development can be very siloed with hard handoffs between teams, product to design, design to dev, etc. There is also a clear breakdown in communication. As a result, the product experience can sometimes also feel fragmented to our customers. So then we start to say, how might we um, start to address this problem, right? Does anybody have any thoughts right off the bat, or um, I can kind of I can give some additional some additional guidance, or if we feel like we're if everybody feels like they're kind of in a good place, then we can start throwing in posted ideas. Anybody need some additional guidance? I think I'm I'm good. And feel free to, if you're kind of just a, you like to move and groove in the zone, sort of writing things down, feel free to do that. Or if you like to vocalize your, how might we feel free to um, throw out some like ideas that you're, that you're adding as well too.
Okay. What are some ideas that people have had off the bat so far? Any, like, what was the first one that came to mind? For me, it was about how to create transparent communication during the product development process. I know in the problem statement, it talks a lot about how there's handoff between loads of different teams. And sometimes I know I've certainly experienced it where, you know, we're kind of in the design mode and the development team is like, where is this at? Why is this design not here? And then, you know, we're trying to get a pick, unpick a bit more in user research. So keeping things transparent is really uh, a hard a hard one to crack. That's great, yeah. What about other people? Anybody else? Oh, yeah, I was going to frame it as how do we in, uh, ensure frequent and consistent discussions that flow freely. Because uh, I think that that's what I experience is, uh, is people feel pressurized, uh, especially if you're in a stakeholder meeting to provide something. And that attitude carries forward, at least in my current experience, is that that pressure carries forward and, and other uh, reactions that you need to be definitive versus exploratory and more, uh, uh, yeah, more exploratory versus definitive. That's good. Did you say um, like more exploratory? Yeah. Mm, so like more time for um, exploration and brainstorming? Ashley, how about you? I uh, put, we, we might um, review or update our communications plans, how we're interacting and informing one another, or do maybe a, a mid planning retro, like as we're working, like how, how's everything going? Um, instead of doing a retro mm -hmm. at the very end, it's, I think it's good to, to kind of get a post check on how things are progressing. And if we need to streamline or, or update something, we can do it um, so that there's, we're actionable. Um, things that we can do at the, the latter half. Yeah, that's good. So I think, so one thing about the how might we's here is that, um, so actually like see a mid planning retro or updating comms plans is kind of like getting to that solution, right? Whereas I think like, it sounds like you, the real how might we is like, how might we um, create ongoing um, communication throughout, you know, throughout a project or the mid, the mid planning retro is how might we ensure that the team is, um, the team, you know, is, is feeling positive or the team is um, that we're staying in touch with, with the team culture throughout or something like that too. I think those are great. See those like, that's kind of like the next step of where we'd end up after we get the how my ways, then you hop into the solutions. But I think, yeah, I think those go into essentially your communications and kind of like that team culture. And that was actually one that I had called out as well too was um, communications and and ensuring that the team culture is staying positive. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's quite easy to get into solutions then when you get here, and I know especially in my experience, anyways, with people who aren't necessarily on our product teams, but our, for example, our marketing teams or sales teams, when we start getting each other, like, how might we turn this button blue? And I'm like, well. Well, why that button and why blue? And then when you start questioning it, they kind of understand, oh, we need to take a step back and say, how can we engage more users? How can we, how might we create more conversions? Like it's facilitating that conversation can be quite challenging sometimes, but really rewarding once it does get through. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like we, okay, we've got about two minutes left. Um, Melinda, are you, I know that you're, you're multitasking with the mom wife, um, but any anything that you wanted to contribute? Yeah, just um, you know, means to find common ground and um, meaningful connection points. And uh, this uh, sometimes challenging to have just meetings for the sake of meetings, um, but meetings that align and uh, actually unite people. Yeah.
Okay. Yeah. So we have, did I interrupt? I was just going to say if no one else has anything else to add, I, I was talking about, um, I had another one. So how might we share our customer user insights at every stage of the product development? Because not everyone is necessarily involved with user research, but there are people who, I mean, in my experience, generally the product manager who's part of every part of the product development cycle. And so taking that knowledge in different forms to different stages of the, so for example, in design, I might share some of the user research feedback for briefing the development team. We might have more of a overview of look at this experience someone had and it didn't work and this is why we're, you know, developing this new thing. So yeah, just quite bringing that customer insight to every product development. There's infinite ways to do that, but for me, something that's been really important. Yeah, absolutely. These are all great ideas. Um, I think we might get we might get booted out in a second. So if we do, then I'll catch you guys on the flip side. But cool. this is a Thank great you. idea generation. So, um, so for those who haven't done this so far or before, um, excited that you you've now ripped off the how might we band aid. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Thank you. Yeah, and I will say whenever you do how might we's. Um, in context of like, you know, a, um, a product experience, it's a little bit different because this was, this is more so about kind of culture, right? Um, and, and the team dynamic. And then whenever you're in the context of um, a product experience, it's a little bit, I think, easier, but um, definitely like try to try to use it or, or um, integrate it in your teams if you can. Cool, thank you. Okay, talk to you guys soon. So welcome back for those who are back and everyone's kind of slowly migrating. So just a quick time check. We've got about 25 minutes, um, which I think will be just enough time for us to kind of get through our exercise. Um, now that everyone's kind of back, um, Bree, I'll let you kind of start moving content from the second breakout into our third breakout area um, for folks to kind of continue the conversation. And I'll kind of take it from there. And Brie, it might, it might take you a moment. So if so, I can kind of go through the activities too while you're doing that. So does that work? Cool. Teamwork, guys, teamwork. So how's everybody feeling? I know we're kind of cramming you guys through a lot in a short period of time. So I appreciate you kind of sticking with. But um, when it comes to our primary problem area and when it comes to product development, kind of tossing things over the fence between the different teams and this breakdown in communication that happens, um, taking a look at the different rooms, there's not anything unique that I'm seeing that you guys are dealing with that Block isn't dealing with. <laughs> I think everyone kind of has different levels of it, different flavors of it, but a lot of it comes down to ensuring that we're understanding um, folks and maybe seeking to understand um, over being understood sometimes. In our, in our breakout, we were chatting about how sometimes, um, especially UX can um, almost kind of talk over people's heads sometimes um, and sound like the professional or expert in the room when really we're kind of losing our audience and maybe should be a bit more thoughtful to bring them along the way with us. And I just thought that was really poignant and like a really good point that was made. So feel free to, if you want to, in your in the chat, drop anything that you thought was poignant or interesting that you learned in your breakout section. So like I said, Bree's going to start getting us um, getting the content from our second breakout moved to the next one. So I will in that time, because I think it might take her a minute, I'll just kind of kind of cover some tips and activities for collaboration and things that we've learned. By the way, um, feel free to in chat, share out things that you guys have learned as well. Because um, that's just super helpful to us. Like anything, any tips that you see that you can expand on what, um, what it is that we're sharing or any templates or anything. But um, I don't know if you guys have found this, but when it comes to um, collaboration, it can really drive innovation. And we found as a company that it's critical to our success. And this is kind of has been like an unlock, um, which is where that better together concept comes from. And it can be uncomfortable um, and new to some. I know with the breakouts, those can sometimes, especially uh, meeting new folks and jumping right into collaboration, um, there could be initially kind of a lower comfort level, but I think as you get 
more familiar with folks, perhaps that gets easier. Um, so don't be considerate of ways to slowly kind of bring folks along um, and consider the fact that it's it's a long game, it's not a race, because again, it's, it's more of a journey than a destination that we reach. Um, something else that we've learned is encouraging transparency and knowledge sharing. Um, some folks, depending on where they fall within an enterprise, especially if it's a bigger enterprise, um, perhaps they don't have the level of transparency that you have within the group that you're working with. Because again, we're, we're working cross-functionally with folks. Um, collaboration comes from trust and it's important to really focus on building that and being empathetic with those that you're trying to kind of bring along. It can be easy to get frustrated at times, but it's important not to. Um, and then to effectively work together, we need those common goals. And I think that was something that came up in um, the product development of how you guys define it. There was a lot of common goals, common direction, this concept of North Star and where people are going, and that's super important. Um, tribal knowledge, while at times is uh, can be based on assumption, it's actually extremely insightful. Um, bringing different people from different functional groups or tribes, if you will, together to kind of cross-pollinate those different ideas and ways of thinking and how they approach things is just, it's really super interesting. Um, and thirdly, cultivating that collaborative community of workshops, like you're cultivating it there, but even after the workshop, continue to build it. Um, like I mentioned, water cooler chats and us being intentional with this, difficult with being virtual to do that. But um, another thing that we've learned is um, as a facilitator, seeing yourself as a mentor and a coach, kind of reaching across orgs to bring people together on neutral ground is a lot of what it's about. Um, and with that comes actually a lot of um, interesting levels of influence and in what you can help different teams reach. You might be able to do something their manager can't do with them or their VP can't do, or it's just, it's interesting because you're almost kind of that, your uh, that neutral ground that a lot of folks can kind of come to. And kind of finally, um, being flexible is important. And we kind of touched on this a little bit before, but meeting your partners the folks that you're working with, where they are and finding ways to make it more comfortable for them um, and being flexible and whatever that process looks like is really important. And then learn what works for your, your, your org, your team, the people that you're working with. Um, don't just take um, our ideas and, and go to those as kind of a silver bullet because they're totally not. Um, we're definitely learning and adapting as we go as well. Bree, how are you doing with moving stuff over? I am done moving things over. So if you want me to yeah, take I'll business give it. activities, I can totally do that. Let I me... will give it to you if you have a second. Okay, cool. And then Kimbra, if you want to bring the stickies on the next breakout to the front, that was the last piece I wanted All to All right, cover. I will do that. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to bring everyone to me. So the next thing that we are going to do, all right, there we go, perfect. So um, a few different templates that for this particular section, and then I'll also talk us through the next breakout that we'll do. But the first one that we wanted to call out was Rosebud Thorn. This is honestly one of my favorite um, activities just across the entire spectrum of facilitation. Um, and what this does, it's kind of a play on how might we in a way, but um, it is where you can identify positive. So those are like the rose, what's going well, the thorn, what's not going well, and then the bud. So where do we have potential or opportunity areas? And um, what I like about this is that you can do it at any level. You can do it whether it's specific to a product or an experience, but also just even as kind of like a retro format um, as well. Like if it's about team culture or if it's about services, um, you can really use it for anything. But what's nice here is that um, we're not just calling out opportunity areas or things we want to fix. It's also giving space for what we think is going well and making sure that whenever we change experiences or make things better, that we're not losing sight of what was already going well. Um, so that is Rosebud Thorn. Crazy Eights, another one that I love. Um, as a designer, this one's really fun for me. So this crazy eights usually happens, um, you know, it can happen at any point in the process, but usually it's happening whenever you're trying to generate ideas or you're wanting to get ideas out there. And so this is where you're, um, you have, you know, came to um, a problem that you're trying to solve 
and you want to generate just a lot of different ideas. So this is specifically eight different ideas in eight minutes. So you have a minute for each um, idea and it can be done with um, text, with illustrations, with, you know, sketches. So a lot of times my teams will do sketches, but sometimes for people who aren't necessarily visual, they might just hand write some notes. Mm -hmm. um, and you can also do this analog style with a sheet of paper and you kind of fold it up to get eight little squares or you can do it digitally as well too. And, and people can contribute um, there as well too. And so that again is just rapid fire ideas. Um, and then you can go back and review with your team and you can even do dot voting on this too. Um, drop post-it notes of ideas or just write some stuff down or if you're more yeah. inclined, you can, yep, you can draw, you can drop the images, whatever gets your point across or a concept that's in your head. Absolutely. And what's neat about that is that everybody has their own kind of playing field in a way, mm -hmm. whereas with How Might We's and some of the other collaborative things, everybody's coming together in one central space. But with the Crazy Ace, it's kind of like you have your own dedicated space to create your own um, idea generation, and then you can go back and review it. Mm -hmm. um, the dot voting is what we're going to be elaborating on for the next um, breakout. And this is where you take um, you know, for example, your how might we's, it could also be, um, you can use dot voting in a lot of different ways. Anytime that you want to um, have people vote or kind of um, indicate something, um, that's where you can use dot voting. So say, for example, if we had done how might we's um, and you have a whole swath of kind of how might we opportunities, um, the team can go through and actually pull dots onto the ones that they um, feel are the most important or the ones that they like the most. Everybody gets a different color. So that way, you know, um, how people have voted and you can go back and ask them questions um, as needed, but everybody gets, um, gets votes and they can, then you start to kind of see that, oh, this one's important to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So it's a really quick way to get, um, to understand how the team is feeling about, um, certain how my ways. And that's the one that we'll actually be leaning into next. So I will turn it back over to Kimbra. Totally. Oh, bring everyone to me. So this will be kind of our last breakout. We'll be expanding on, thank you, Bree, for moving over everyone's content from the second activity. I see that some of you were able to theme your How Might We's. I also know there was a lot of great discussion happening too, so that could have been uh, difficult to kind of get through those and have time to theme. But once you get into your breakout rooms, be sure to um, quickly kind of cluster and theme your How Might We's if you didn't yet. Otherwise, kind of follow the the how-tos on the left and some tips of how to surface some of the more important concepts or ideas that came out of uh, your collaboration with your new friends. So um, Ashley, I'll let you kind of get things rolling and we'll give you guys, you'll have probably about eight minutes. We'll see you guys back in just a little bit. Hi everyone, how's it going? Hi. Hey, good, thanks. Awesome. Well, I am going to be joining you guys' breakout room. We're breakout room number two, correct? Yeah. Awesome. Let's get over here. So uh, Bree has already copied over everyone's sticky notes from the earlier um, session, and we're going to be doing some dot voting using only six of the votes. Quickly identify the top how might we um, that we feel are the most impactful, and once that's done, we will identify our top three. Um, so let's get going. Let's do it. Shall we? Each one of us just pick one color, I guess. Yep. Or... Each one of us will pick a color. Um, put, um, you get six votes each and we'll figure out which one is, which one of these or which one of these are going to be our top three. Let's zoom in. Can you vote on something more than once? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's totally fair. You guys got a lot of good ones and I see that you guys have grouped them by kind of themes of trust, continuous alignment, visibility and understanding and then purpose. It's great. Be interesting to see if we have 
top voted how might we from from the different themes or maybe we just really are focused in on one of one of the themes you guys have have identified Has anyone used dot voting in any um, on other boards that they've created before? Yeah, it worked out well, actually, mm -hmm. quite useful, very useful. Yeah, me too. Also, good experience. Yeah, I really liked it. When people have to pick, it really helps align priorities. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> Do you think that? Have you guys used the voting feature in Miro as well? Do you think with dot voting, it, it creates kind of more inequality if you see maybe your your manager or someone from leadership using their dot to vote on something? I think that's kind of why we incorporate it with the voting feature in Miro. You can uh, make it, it's anonymous. Mm -hmm. In my experience, we didn't have any management in the room, so I okay. didn't have to worry too much about that. Same. Anonymity and anonymity is good for some of my other teams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think, I mean, when we have people from different backgrounds and sort of management or like influence levels, I'd always make sure that it would be like the same color mode mm -hmm. so that you cannot distinguish so that, mm -hmm. you know, the red vote doesn't count twice, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's wrap this up in the next 40 or so seconds. I'd love to kind of hear or see which of these is the top. If everyone's done, we can, looks like our top ones are, oops, top ones are this. How I, how might we increase transparency, transparency between teams, members, work status, and roles? That's great. We can kind of put our top ones up here. Looks like we also have stop talking about handoff. Does anyone, I, I wasn't in this session earlier. Does anyone want to give a little bit more um, context, whoever added that to the board? Sure thing, yeah. So I just questioned the notion of having a handoff um, as, as a ceremony, instead of having a con this continuous alignment, continuous dialogue between especially design and developer um, around what we're supposed to do what we can do, uh, what we will do. Great. And it looks like we have a two-way tie between celebrating team successes and aligning on team purpose. Do we only get three? No, I think we can. I think we can sneak <laughs> these two in. It's three to five. Oh, perfect. We're right in the middle then. Yeah. <laughs> Is any, are these surprising for anyone, do you think? Or do you think these are your, your top, your top ones that, that make sense based on the prompt? They don't surprise me, but I feel like I've spoken a lot. I'd love to hear someone else voice mm -hmm. their opinion. Yeah, also not surprising to me. Also reflects when we do retros and things like that in our company. This is basically the, the things most teams want to, want to improve. Mm -hmm. How do you guys celebrate team successes? I'm curious. I mean, f first, it's really a or first it starts for me with get giving feedback if mm -hmm. someone um, either individually or a team does a good job uh, then also with some let's say small incentives for example um, but we don't do it uh, often enough i have to say so I think you can um, celebrate team successes a couple of ways. I mean, obviously, one is that critical deliverables, you know, having team happy hours, whether it's virtual or in person. But even just with your daily stand ups, you know, if you tackle a problem or you encountered a challenge, you know, taking that time to celebrate, you know, what we've achieved. 
um, is important to build that uh, trust factor. Yesterday we played backyard games. <laughs> I really Did you like that uh, scribble I don't know. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs>Great. Well, I think we're getting pushed back into the main room. So thank you guys for all contributing and I'll catch you guys there. Talking to myself on mute. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> we were just getting into some great conversation too. It always feels like there's never enough time, guys. I, so what's interesting is in our group, um, we really kind of focused on and honed in on some pretty big opportunities, but there was one that surfaced to the top for us about um, having a common goal and remembering it through the development process was a big how might we that surfaced. Um, feel free to drop in chat anything that you thought was really powerful that came forward as a how might we that um, might even be um, helpful for you to continue to explore after today's events. So, um, all right, we're, we're kind of coming up to the end. We got about six minutes or so. Um, and again, the board will be available after the event for you guys to um, come back to kind of look at things. I encourage you to take a look at the content that's out there and see what you might be able to um, learn from it as well. So um, I'm gonna kind of bring everyone to me as we start to move forward and kind of wrapping things up today. Um, just some final thoughts. Um, we've covered a lot today. We know that we have, we threw a lot at you guys. What we're hoping is that the board is a reference that you're, you feel comfortable coming back to and then noodling on later. Um, again, we'll have some templates out in Miroverse soon. Some of the ones that you saw, but beefed up a little bit, a little more robust for you. Um, but hopefully there was some inspiration around um, considering just the topic of better together and having that as almost like a value or keeping it top of mind to help drive collaborative interaction um, with cross-functional partners, um, creatively using Miro or other tools. And I mentioned PowerPoint a few times. I consider Miro just a massive, really heavily functional like PowerPoint slide. If you can work with PowerPoint, you can work with Miro. I mean, it's that it's really that easy to get started. It can be as, as light or as complex as you like, like, which is something that we love about it. Um, but making that facilitation um, easier for you and your teams, finding those tools that work for different groups is crucial. Something we talked about in a small group was how might we make it accessible, like the content that's in Miro. And there's lots of great ways that you can uh, export content from Miro from using frames. We also talked about having almost like a, a launch pad board where people can jump out to different boards from one board um, and maybe even using a PowerPoint deck to do that. Um, just an idea. Um, being more people-centered, inclusive and collaborative, we're hoping we kind of inspired some ideas with you um, that could maybe help you drive some change with where you're working. Um, or maybe just, just a minimum viable <laughs> product of that would be you've expanded your network with the connections you've made today and maybe you had fun learning a little bit more about Miro. Um, and like I mentioned, the Miro board is gonna still be here later, but um, we encourage you to come back, browse around. We have a lot still to learn from each other. And really, as we look at it, we've really spent time and tried to focus on empathizing with each other. And that's really what we've, we've tried to talk about. Um, and if you start and end there, our, our, our feeling is that you're well on your way to facilitating collaborative product development. And just kind of an ending before you leave, um, in the spirit of everything that we talked about today, we'd love, 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 love your feedback um, on the workshop. And take a few minutes to add some sticky notes to the board to the right. I'll let Bree kind of take it from there, but um, we thank you for your time. We thank Miro for um, letting us help with this today. Also feel free to connect with us on LinkedIn as well. Yeah, absolutely. And there's, um, so Kimbra and I are both on LinkedIn. You can you can follow the links there. And then um, as Kimbra mentioned, we'd love to get your feedback if you have a few extra minutes. Um, so, and Kimbra actually started us off here that, um, you know, it's okay to have dislikes. It's totally okay to provide um, feedback. 
you know, um, I think her and I always feel that there's never enough time <laughs> to get through everything. Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, we would love to hear your thoughts, pull on some post-its about what you liked, what you disliked, and also just um, other ideas that um, you'd like to hear about from, from Miro events. Um, and then what you can do with these dot boats is you can actually pull the dots over into the zero to 10 scale, zero being low, 10 being high. Looks like some people are already getting the hang of it. Um, but this kind of actually, this is a perfect end cap of like all the activities we've ran through today. So hopefully between now having the post-it breakouts and the dot voting breakouts, you guys are gonna be pros. <laughs> but um, I'll reiterate what Kimber said. Thank you all so much for your participation. Um, and especially um, during the breakouts, I know that the, the few that I were in um, or that I was in were, were great and they had a great conversation. So much appreciated and thanks to Miro as well. Thank you, Kembra. Thank you, Bree. And thank you everyone for joining today. It was great to host this workshop and I thought it was really insightful as well. And I really loved how you guys made it so actionable with those templates that people can immediately take back to their teams and implement these strategies. So really appreciate all the work you put into this session today. Everyone, please leave your feedback. We'll be happy to share you the recording and share with you the board following. And we hope that you had a great time today at the workshop. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.